If you recall, I moved the motion for the merger of CPC with ACN. And it was because of what we had always understood that all these smaller parties would never be able to win a presidential election in Nigeria. Never. Except there will be a handshake between the Northwest and Southwest. PDP will remain in power forever. And I must say, not all those who are in PDP are devils, and not those, all those in CPC and ACN are saints. At close range, you want to begin to thank God that, oh my God, you know what you are doing, because who and who would you have put where in 2011? Right now, as presently constituted, Whereas all we're looking for was a merger between the Northwest and the Southwest, the bulk of voters are in those groups. The whole of Southeast and South South equal Southwest in terms of number of voters. So when you take the Northwest and the Southwest together, if they can vote on block for one party, that's the end of the game. Let me backtrack here. The first time I ever saw General Bori in my life was in my office. He was led by someone, Senator Afikuyomi, who was going to run on his platform, then of uh, AMPP, as a governor of Lagos State. By the grace of God, I taught Afikuyomi in Sunday school at the Yaba Baptist Church. And when they asked him to lead them to Christian uh, leaders who they don't have influence. He brought General Buhari to my office. That was the first time I saw him in life. The second time I would see him physically, it was at the instance of Tinumbu. Tinumbu sent Lai Muhammad to me. Lai Muhammad had brought on the uh, platform of ICRD, International Center for Reconstruction and Development, to discuss about Nigeria in our knowledge a workshop concerning the issues and the solutions to our problems. So, Lai Mohammed came. I landed Lagos one day from an SNG meeting in Abuja, and Lai Mohammed sent me a text. We need to see you urgently so that I can help us persuade General Buhari to run on our platform. Then, AC, AD, before it became ACN. No, it was Action Congress first, then Tinubu was part of AD, then AC and then ACN. And um, I accepted the challenge, and I booked an appointment to go meet with uh, General Buhari. I called him uh, that I want to come and discuss with him. I'm giving you this background to see that the merger was not an overnight success. It had been on behind the scene. And the day before we leave, Jimmy Agbaje, myself, and Yinka Dumakin were to go on their behalf, to broker the coming together of General Buhari's uh, running on the platform of ACN. I asked Lai Mohammed, who would be the running mate, and he said, Tinumbu, and I said, ah, ah, I cannot broker a Muslim Muslim ticket. What would the Christian community do? Or if they find out, what would they say to me? That's, I'm giving you that background because of the things I'm about to say. What has influenced by keeping quiet for a season. So I called General Buhari back and said, I will not be coming anymore. And we didn't see you again. Now, when General Buhari called me, I said, I would like you to be my running mate on the 15th of January 2011. Apart from calling my daughter, who was in the house with me, and telling her, calling my wife, Calling Pastor Deboye, Tinumbu was the next person I called that day. I said, uh, Tinumbu, I mean, I you, this has happened. This man called me to be his running mate. Do me a favor, give me one Christian from ACN so I could take to him. And that will still bring him to your platform. He thanked me, he said, My respect for you goes to high heavens. I'm more or less quoting verbatim what's in my book. Uh, I'll get back to you. He never did. 
So I've invited me at the bio, former governor of Ekiti State, and my classmate who are in the university together, Nigeria, I mean, not Nigeria law school. I got to law school before him, but we started in the same faculty together. He dropped a year. And me, he came to my house and I said, look, Pastor Ashwa, you, you are a Christian. Either you or Shibaju, I will take to General Bori to run with him. Me, he said, if I want him to stay alive, mm -hmm. I should not do so things except Ashwa, you who suggested he can't come from any of them. I didn't know what to do anymore. I still did not accept. I took Nasir Rarufai, Jimmy Lawal, uh, Ayinka Odumaki, and went to General to ask him, why would you ask me to be your running mate? I've never been a politician. I'm not a member of your party. I owe no party card. What's your reason? And that was the day he mentioned what I shared there. That when he saw me marching for Nigeria, that was the time his heart picked me that I could mobilize such number of people at a short notice. Then I must have some followers. Politicians think in terms of number. And he said, number two, he's an old man. Supposing he dies in office, he wants someone who can hold Nigeria together and not let Nigeria disintegrate. And that he has checked me out. I was born into a Muslim home. I became a Christian, so I know the two sides of religion. I was born in the South and raised in Sokoto. I know two sides of the country. Those were his calculation. And he has checked that I have integrity. He knows we can work together. I still did not accept. We left that place to go to Nasir Arufai's house. And I told Nasir, I said, I don't want to work with this man. Except you guys are coming with me. Nasir was in PDP then. That was a tall order. And he said, because of what we have done with arrowheads, he's persuaded I'm a leader to follow. So he did come from PDP and joined CPC. The night of the afternoon that I signed that president, vice presidential thing was the last day that the thing would be submitted. The night before, three of us were in the same hotel. Unknown to General Buari and I, a passenger was also there, who were in three different presidential suites, he sent for Madame Nasir Arufai to speak with him that if General could drop me, Anungosi Nguela will be taken to run with Buhari. He has called IBB and Dangote to support him so that he could win this election. Early in the morning, Madame Nasir Arufai was in my suite and he said, this is what happened last. I said, praise God. I've not signed the form. Let's go. So we went straight into General Buhari's room. The reason for my background story, you'll find out in about five minutes. And I got to General. At this time, General and Malam are not speaking terms. They've been at war. Because of what Malam said, General Buhari said about him during the Senate trial of him, that he saw him as an elder brother as a, a, a father figure, as a mentor who could have called him privately, but he spoke publicly. So they were not on speaking terms. That was the day I broke out peace, and they became, uh, they became, uh, you know, they saw eye to eye. And I relayed what General Basanjo had said to Malam. And I appealed to General Boale. I said, five reasons why you must take a Kojwe Nguela. The sixth reason I kept to myself, and that sixth reason was known to Aero 5. That's the arrowheads. I kept that, I didn't mention that, that either me or him is still one group because we're all in arrowheads together. But five reasons why you should prefer the um, Ngozi as a running mate. One, She's Delta Igbo. That will solve the South, 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 East problem. Two, she's a Christian, a Reverend Nominal. That will solve the faith balance ticket. Christian Muslim or Muslim Christian. Three, she's a woman. That will solve the gender equation. Because it was Buhari 
who first passed into law that the gender issue must be part of what each government under him must do to put women in cabinet. So I sold that to him, that gender balance. Number four, a former minister of finance and a former minister of external affairs. That's experience, which I don't have. And number five, the managing director of World Bank. That's international exposure. She more or less single-handedly uh, handled the, uh, the uh, debt cancellation for Nigeria. I said, on these five reasons, I appeal to you to please take her. I, will, I have not signed the form, so I brought it out. Those are stories people didn't know at all. I said, so it will not be any complication. I will address press conference and will take Ngozi and and General Boris, and thank you very much. Honorable Minister, I'm glad you're recording this because of future. Honorable Minister, um, uh, that's the way he addressed Erufai. What do you think? Since you, he spoke to you directly, you have worked with Obasanjo and I have worked with Obasanjo. What do you think is Obasanjo's uh, catch-22 here? And he looked up, he said, General, we both have worked with him. You know that Obasanjo would do anything except he has an interest to protect. But nonetheless, let's play along and see where this will end. And General Bori said, I don't do that. I call you, Pastor Bakari, because my heart picks you. And if you say no, I'll look for a substitute for the next 15 days. You can leave the form with me. And Nasir said, Pastor, please fill this form. I told them thereafter, I said, the reason I didn't want to fill the form is I was not ready to die before my mother. And every assistant general I ever had died before him. Tunde Diago, or Kadigo, who may say, okay, they're all dead. You understand? People don't know what transpired in that season at all. But I said, okay. I said, here it is. And they took it to um, INEC. And it became public news. Blah, 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 blah. Those 15 days were 15 days of death, burial, and resurrection. I did not hear God speak one, one moment to me. I prayed, I prayed. I turned to Pastor Deboe twice. Pastor Deboe said, I told you the last time I was in your church that that season is around the corner. And when you came to me, because when they first broke at it, I went to Pastor Deboe himself to persuade up your Zekwezeli to be the running mate. And he said, no, 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 you need a strong Christian. Emphasis on S-T-R-O-N-G, capital. He reminded me, he said, when I said that, I knew you'd be the person. I said, sir, okay. I called him back a second time. He said, don't be like Moses. Whether you're going to win this election or not, go there and go stand for God's kingdom there. And so I led General Buhari to him eventually. And my wife was there. And he said, look, he has never felt any pain in his heart except the time I, uh, Buhari was uh, overthrown because he was bringing some order into Nigeria. But now that his son has joined him, he will pray his heart out and may God bless us. That's what he said to me privately and publicly there. Whatever was said elsewhere, I don't know because I've had other things thereafter. So the campaign began. And towards the tail end, Tinumbu came that he would like An alliance can, cannot be a merger anymore between ACN and CPC. But on two conditions, they are dropping their own presidential candidate and their vice presidential candidate. And generals should drop me. And they will choose who will be vice presidential candidate. Three days, three days before they met, and the ministry had come to me from Atiku camp because Atiku was part of that configuration. Atiku, IBB, Guzao, and Tinumbu were the ones who met to say, look, we can't have Buari and Tunde Bakari. In case they win this election, it'll be too tough. Let's look for someone else. So 
Gerard took uh, one of our BOT members who I brought into BOT to that meeting. And he said to them, you can have any position. I think it would be wicked to ask Pastor Bakari to step down. Because he didn't ask for it. I pleaded with him and I knew what he went, we went through before he eventually signed. I can't do that. You can take finance ministry, you can take any ministry, but I will not ask him. But I had gotten information from two sources, from an ministry of uh, Atiku, with the offer that will come with it in terms of cash compensation and buildings and what have you. And they actually brought it in form format just to sign. And second informant was a senior oba in Southwest who called me that Tinumbu and my older cousin, a former governor, Oshaba, were with him to say this was their mission going to Abuja and he had told them not to touch me. And I told the oba, I said, I'm willing to resign to move the nation forward, but I will resign as Tunde Bakari. At that time, it was too late to resign. To resign is the president, the person would not run the election. So they brought the idea that I should resign as vice president of Nigeria and posted the letter to 7th of June. And I told them, my mother did not raise a fool. I cannot commit perjury. I've not occupied the office you're asking me to resign. I'm willing to resign as Tunde Bakari, which I did. And I gave them a letter, but not as Vice President of Nigeria because I've not occupied the office. That will be perjury. And they say it will not get into the press. It will be with the parties. The following day was front page of Vanguard newspaper thinking I'd signed the letter. But I didn't sign any letter. So we had to go through that election. And um, the rest is history. Why do I say the rest is history? Because they know they didn't win that election. Justice Salami ordered at the Court of Appeal that all the ballot papers be brought in for forensic investigation. And when we paid the money to bring the experts in and the machinery, they removed Salami, disbanded that panel, and formed another one. Even if they had won that election, there would have been, uh, we would have had to do what you call let no. Second. Second. Uh, no, he has a name. Rerun. It's a rerun, uh, but he has a particular. It's, yeah, it's okay. Don't worry yourself. You have an idea. Because CPC was registered in December of 2010. And CPC only came out that December. And within three, four months, he had more than 12 million votes in the North. If you had gone to any of the campaign with us, you have found the reason why Obasan just said, Buhari is a spirit. And that only a spirit can organize a party in four months that will have this followership. You have not seen a sea of heads like that in your life. These boys will run into a moving plane. His name just evokes all kinds of passion in the North. When we did the first public campaign, the flag of in Kaduna, I stood there and said, God, how did I get here? What in the world am I doing? Because if there's a stampede here, I would die, everybody would die. It was so much. And then we got home. Then I was staggered. He said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh. And I was almost angry. I thought he was just using it as a cause. I said, you know, what did you just say? He said, Pastor, you don't have monopoly of Jesus. Wow. These are things people don't know. Buhari's driver for 10 years uninterrupted is a born-again Christian. His armor bearers, as we call them, bodyguards, are all members of Lighthouse, Pastor Shola's church. <clears throat> Buhari fought he didn't want to stand still because he was going to divorce his Christian wife. And he said, that's unfair. But they hung that thing on him just to ensure that he would not win election because they think there will be 
reprisal or retaliation of what they did to him when they overthrew him. That's coming out also in a book, the reason for the overthrow and why they had to quickly move because IBB himself was about to be retired for certain he's, he's coming out in his own publication soon. I said all this to say why I've kept quiet. We were in London when we sat down, Nasir Orifai, Jimmy Lawal, myself and General. General said to me, no, first I was with him alone in his bedroom because we were cleaning the living room in London. He said, we have three things in common. 